So in the search for new agents to slow disease progression in Parkinson's disease, a lot of interest in the last few years has concentrated on medications that are already on the market for other indications that may also slow disease progression in Parkinson's. And one of the medications of most interest in this field is nortriptyline. This is an antidepressant already on the market, which in the lab has also been shown to have some properties that may delay disease progression. And that includes inhibiting the clumping together of a protein that underlies the disease process in Parkinson's. Now the key is now to take these, this preclinical evidence into clinical trials to show that this can be translated into delaying disease progression in people with Parkinson's. Clinical trials are very expensive, but we have recently been funded to do a trial with nortriptyline in Parkinson's in order to show that it is helpful for depression in Parkinson's, which is another huge unmet need. In this trial, we will have three arms. One of them is with nortriptyline, another arm is with escitalopram, another antidepressant, and one is placebo. And it will be a double-blind controlled trial, which means that neither the a person with Parkinson's disease, nor the clinician, nor the researcher will know until the end of the trial which medication was given to each individual participant. And that is very important in order to eliminate bias in the inter interpretation of the results and also in the assessment of individuals by knowing which medication the individual is taking. In this trial, we are mainly looking at depression as an outcome, but we are also looking at another other outcomes including anxiety and also motor outcomes. With the help of the Cure Parkinson's Trust we will expand on the assessment of the motor assessments and also include assessments in the off period in addition to the on period assessments during which depression will be assessed and we will also include video recordings in order to allow for a more standardized and also digitalized uh, analysis of the motor outcomes. This is very important as in the clinical assessments in this antidepressant trial, we will use standardized clinical scales in the on periods, but this may miss subtle differences between the two groups. And if we assess people at other time points when they're not uh, taking their anti-Parkinsonian medication and use uh, digitized video recordings, we can pick up subtle differences which may exist uh, between the arms and may be missed with the other assessments. If we find a difference between the nortriptyline arm and the placebo arm, this will be an enormous step forwards in finding a medication that's already on the market that, has a, that makes a difference to the disease progression of Parkinson's disease. Even if we only find subtle differences that not, may not make a huge difference for the individual's overall outcome, it will open up a whole new area of, uh, of research into drug mechanisms to find new drugs that have a much, more, uh, much stronger effect on disease modification. As this antidepressant trial with nortriptyline has already funded by the NIHR, a UK government funded body, the Cure Parkinson's Trust has worked with us to expand the assessments and maximize the possibilities in this trial to examine whether nortriptyline also has uh, disease delaying uh, effects on the motor aspects of Parkinson's disease, which if it is successful and we find a difference would, in my opinion, revolutionize the field. So this is a trial over four years, but for each indi individual participant, the participation in the trial is for a maximum of one year. The antidepressant outcome will be, main outcome, will be measured after eight weeks, but also after six months and after 12 months. And we're particularly interested in finding any changes in the motor outcomes after one year. So we're very interested in assessing people at baseline eight weeks, six months, and one year. Overall, we will aim to recruit over 400 people with Parkinson's and some depressive symptoms. They don't have to have severe symptoms of depression, but they have to fulfill certain inclusion criteria for the trial. And we will try and include individuals from all sorts of clinics across the UK. So if there is anyone uh, attending a Parkinson's clinic, uh, participating in the trial, we would like to hear from them. 
We will recruit across 30 sites uh, in England, Scotland and Wales. We try to be as inclusive as possible, but there will be exceptions, some people who are already on antidepressants or those who have certain contraindications to one of the medications cannot participate. However, if you're not certain, please do contact one of the trial sites to find out whether you're eligible. We will only be able to include people who have some depressive symptoms, but they do not need to be severe. The assessments will consist of questionnaires and a clinical assessment at baseline eight weeks, six months and 12 months. And we will also offer some blood tests, but they're not mandatory. If someone cannot attend an assessment, we will try and do as much as possible remotely or with a home visit.